Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. If you like mashed potatoes, get ready because you're going to absolutely love my version of mashed potatoes. The only thing is if you make these, people might not want to eat your main dish. They might only want to eat the mashed potatoes. That's how good they are. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing we do, wash our potatoes. I already washed mine and with a knife, and I like to use a knife with a little bit of serrated the edge to it, just score your way around the potato once. That's it. So you're just taking your knife and you're, you're just scoring the potato, just cutting through the skin ever so slightly and just work your way around the potato once. Okay, because we are going to boil these potatoes with the skin on. When you leave the skin on, you're actually retaining the nutrients of the potato. So it's very, very important to leave the skin on. And by scoring the skin in such a manner, it's gonna be easier to remove the skin after they're boiled. Okay, so after we've scored them, put them in a pot, cover them with water. So I like to go at least an inch or two above the potatoes to make sure that we've got enough water. There we go, so that it doesn't boil out. So there we have it. All right, let's put this on the stove. We need to bring this to a boil. So we're gonna put the stove on high. Now, the beauty with this recipe is while those potatoes are cooking, you can start to prepare your other ingredients. So with our potatoes on high, I like to keep the lid on so it comes to a boil quicker. And today I'm using five potatoes, medium size, which is two pounds. So for this recipe, it's about two pounds of potatoes and I'm using the red potato. You could use a red potato. You could use um, a Yukon Gold. Those are my two favorites. Other than that, you could use any potato you want, but those are my two go-to. First ingredient, of course, extra virgin olive oil, four tablespoons. We're also gonna use four tablespoons of salted butter, which is also uh, equivalent to a half a stick. Uh, we are gonna slice up very thinly one large onion. It's a sweet onion, like a Vidalia onion. Uh, otherwise, you, can, you could use a regular cooking onion or a red onion, but sweet onions are best. Uh, secret ingredient number one, two cups of sauerkraut. And it's not packed in here tightly, it's just taken out of the jar and placed in there. So two cups loosely packed. Um, today I'm using sauerkraut with carrots because that's what I had opened, as you can see there. Uh, I had that opened already, so I'm using it. But otherwise, I prefer to use your genuine sauerkraut that's been fermented in wine. But either way, uh, you can't go wrong. You just need two cups of sauerkraut. Uh, for salt, it's basically one teaspoon of salt uh, per pound of potato. We have two pounds of potatoes, so it's going to be two te uh, teaspoons of salt, of course, and salt to taste. The other uh, key and important ingredient is bacon. For two pounds of potatoes, we are going to use one package of bacon. So let's slice up our onions, and I like to slice them very, very thin, as thin as possible. I like them really, really thin because they, they cook up nicely and they more or less melt right in through the mashed potatoes. So nice and as thin as you can. And when you can't hold the onion anymore, just flip it over on this flat side and you can continue making small cuts. It's very easy to do that way. Again, flip it over. There we go, and we'll do the other half now as well. There we go. Onions are ready. With our onions now cut, we can begin to prepare our bacon. And for that, I just quite simply cut it into about, oh, I'm gonna say half inch pieces. You want them into like little bite-sized pieces. There we go, and actually that's more like closer to an inch, I guess. But there we go, that's perfect. So those ingredients are now ready. Our other ingredients are ready. As you can see, our potatoes have come to a boil very, very nicely. So now they need to boil on high for 30 minutes. And you could always check if you're not sure by just poking a fork through your potato, it should go through 
with no resistance. But half an hour usually does it. And during that half hour, we're going to start preparing our other ingredients. Four tablespoons, I'm going to say four generous tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, and then we're going to put the stove on, put it on medium heat. We're going to add our half a stick of salted butter. There we go. We're going to get those incorporated together. Our butter is just about all melted. There we go. And now the first thing we're going to do is cook up those onions. So in go the onions. I'm going to keep the heat on medium and we're going to saute these up until they're translucent. As you can see, our onions are coming along very, very nicely. And you know, anytime you start a dish off with extra virgin olive oil, butter, and sauteed onions, you know it's going to be good. Okay, so at this point, we're going to add our two cups of sauerkraut. And we want to mix these together and let them fry up together in that butter and extra virgin olive oil mixture that we have. So just toss them up together and every so often just give it a little stir. Yeah, maybe every two, three minutes. These are coming very, very nicely. It's been about oh six, seven minutes. And I think at this point we can now add our bacon. So start to add the bacon and same thing. You're going to want to mix the bacon in best that you can. Break it all up and get it incorporated with the onion and the sauerkraut. So just work it in and get it all covered up with those beautiful delicious flavors. I think that's looking pretty good. Things are nicely incorporated. So now we can let those now continue to fry again on medium heat for about yeah up to 10 minutes. We'll just let that nice and slowly cook away. Our timer is just set to go off, so those potatoes are going to be done. I'll give these one last stir. And remember, we did all this prep and cooking while those potatoes were being boiled. So it's a very, very efficient way to make this dish. All right, so this now can go on simmer. I'm going to put that on low. And let's turn our potatoes off. They are now done. Let's drain them and get them mashed. Bring our potatoes over. I like to run a little bit of cold water as I dump my potatoes. As my father says, it always helps with the uh, cooling down of the pipes. And as you may have noticed, yes, I have been cleaning up as I've been going along. So Laura will be very happy with me. <laughs> I have plenty of time to do the cleanup while things were cooking. To peel these, I like to do them while they're hot. So just on a cloth, I'll just take, uh, I'll take a knife and the skin will come off relatively easy. And I just remove the skins from the potato. Because I want to mash these while they're still hot. And of course we're going to add it to our hot uh, frying pan as well. So it's good to be, keep everything at, at a nice hot temperature. So let's get all of these peeled. And there we go, our last one is now done. Perfect. So while they're still hot, at this point I like to mash them. Now, you could mash them as you like. You could use a fork or a hand masher. My preference is to use a potato ricer. These things are invaluable, phenomenal, because they actually, if you notice how it comes out here, you'll see it just kind of comes out like rice, little pieces of rice. Put the next one in, same thing. And this will help make your mashed potatoes light and fluffy as well. All right. And as you can see, they're all, they're, they're cooked, which is why they're easy to process this way. Push it down, squeeze it all the way. And sometimes you get some overflow here on the ricer. No problem. Just take it, put it right back in again, give it a squeeze. What you could do, because this potato is a little bit bigger, you could cut the potatoes in half. It makes them easier to press through the ricer. But I'm just pat patting them through whole. Oh. 
Okay, and there's some excess there. Let's get that back in. Put that through. A little more excess. We don't want to waste any potato. Put that through and then a the little bit on the bottom here. There you go. Perfect. So now at this stage is a great time to uh, salt your potatoes. So again, it's salt to taste. And what I like to do, general rule of thumb, is I like to add one teaspoon of salt per pound of potato. So in this case, it's going to be two teaspoons, as I mentioned earlier. And I'm using uh, sea salt, but of course you could use just regular table salt or any salt that you prefer. Let's add our mashed potato to the frying pan. And what we want to do now is again, like we did with the other ingredients, you want to incorporate all these ingredients, get everything mixed together, get all those flavors onto that mashed potato. Just turn it around. Again, the, the, the stove is still on simmer and that's perfectly fine, but we want to make sure we do a good job here and get everything mixed in really, really nicely. Oh yeah, there we go. That is looking really, really good. Our potato is nice and hot. Our mashed potatoes are, and they're incorporated very, very nicely. So let's remove this from the heat. And now we're going to add one more ingredient, which I did not mention earlier because it was in the refrigerator. And that ingredient is sour cream. And I'm going to, for this recipe, anywhere from a half a cup to one cup, depending on your liking, uh, I'm actually using three quarters of a cup. Uh, again, because that's all I had in the fridge. Otherwise, I would have used one cup. But again, you could use anywhere from a half a cup to one cup, depending on your liking of sour cream. And this, to me, is the icing on the cake. Okay, that just helps tie everything in together. And again, as we've been doing all along, incorporate. Get all that sour cream mixed into the potato very, very nicely. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so good. Let's put that into our serving container. Oh my goodness, this is so full of flavor. Oh yeah. We don't want to waste any of that either. All of that comes out. There we go. Oh my goodness. What an absolute beautiful dish of mashed potatoes right there like you've never had before. All those flavors mixed together make for a fantastic, fantastic mashed potato. Oh yeah. I'll tell you what. You give this recipe a try. I guarantee you, this will be the absolute best mashed potatoes that you will ever make. They are so amazing. And you can't stop eating them. Really, really tasty. I certainly hope you give this recipe a try. It's one of our family favorites. It goes over very well with friends and family all the time. It's so good. And you saw how easy it was to do. Very, very easy comes together quickly. Absolutely beautiful. I want to thank you wherever you're tuning in from today for joining me on Cooking with the Koyas. And until next time, bon appetito. Oh my, this is really good.